there is passed into law. So that is what I mean. So not until I need something, well, I don't go asking for it, everything. And to say no, that I, as I, a I member of government, I should that. know everything. So now that, I don't think that now is... Now that people are showing <laughs> interest is, in the building of the cathedral, yeah, so they will, should use the RTI to demand for in information. In the meantime, if we need the information, but I believe that in the course of time, the cathedral they will come out with a statement. But You see, when we say that government currently has become almost immune to its own promises. That they were just high falutin noises that government was making. That in the same breath, government has literally collateralized every levy that was introduced to serve a particular purpose. And Annie, all that I can say that I have experienced in terms of the current administration's proclivity for spending and ostentation is the fact that I am yet to see any measures in terms of austerity, prudence, cutting back on profligate spending. It forms part of the expenditure of government. We all know, you're talking of members of parliament to investigate. The report from the Auditor General has been made available to parliament. It is not to say that we are done with it. The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament chaired by Honorable Averji and then DC member. You have every opportunity at your disposal to further probe if the report before the Parliament Select Committee as we right. there is no report on COVID-19. Please, 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 That is right. the procedure we work in this country. Yeah, okay. So every expenditure of government will be brought before Parliament. Gonna... Yeah, I know Star Wars of your party that accused your former flag bearer, uh, President, uh, 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 flag bearer, Mahama. Mahama. Of having looted state resources. Like who? Please. For your founder, the founder of your party. And, and where is the evidence? Please. You see, you are the founder of the party. Never no. use your name. No. No. Please. Evidence. Someone no. gets the founder of a party. A no. judge. A judge. Where is the founder of a party? The judge. The Supreme Court has described you as create loot and oh, share. Look at this. <laughs> and describe your party and your government as create so let's loot and share. Of it. I don't believe that the God I believe in actually expects my country to fund the construction of a mosque or of a cathedral at the time that there will be a pregnant woman today somewhere in this country and because of the flooding needed to cross over to the other bank to assess a, poly, a, a clinic and can't do that because we don't have access to that cheap compound or something there's always going to be no it's not always going to be in advanced countries, nobody is going to be a dead, not have access to education or health. It is not true that we, our problems are always going to be. I, I don't believe well, it. Both countries have problems too. No, the, the problem they have, if somebody decides not to go to school, but the school, that is a different matter. Okay. If somebody decides to drink her lungs and uh, what do you call it, her liver of, of alcohol and smoke and die, when there's information that smoking can give you cancer, lung cancer, and other things. But there are people who sleep on the streets because they can't. Yes, there are rent. people who sleep on the street, but I can guarantee you, every citizen where I've ever lived, even if you sleep on the street and you're a citizen, you can take your doll and go and sleep on the street. Okay. If you are a junkie, okay. you take cocaine, you take heroin, and your brain is screwed up, and because of that, you can't even find your own doll and go and say in a cancer flag, that is a different matter. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. And of course, this is Good Morning Ghana. Uh, we are live on DSTV Channel 277. We are live from our studios here at Ridge here in Accra. Remember that this is the best news analysis show um, on the airwaves that you can find every morning. We are here every morning for you. Let me quickly go through the stories on the front pages of the newspapers and I begin with that of the Daily Graphic, on the front page of the Daily Graphic, it says, Raise butter across roads. Minister deploys mobile maintenance unit 
to fix problems. That's uh, on the daily graphic. GHS records five cases of monkeypox, COVID-19 influenza still lurking. Illegal Chinese miners jailed 15 years. And special supplements on manufacturing. That's the Daily Guide newspaper there. The Ghanaian Times. Ghanaian Times. Health alerts. Ghana records five monkeypox cases. GHS urges public to take precautionary measures to avoid spread. President inaugurates 175 million Ghana City cereal manufacturing plant in Tema. And bush meat is toxic, not good for consumption. Dr. Ufuri Boatin says that one. So this is the Ghanaian Times newspaper. The Daily Guide. Daily Guide. Members of Parliament in dogfight over gay bail and exploit after Nana charges industries. That's a free trade area. Ghana records first monkeypox cases and government or support government to green Ghana. Samuel Abdullahi Jinapo says that one. Sack lazy public sector workers. Um, Thomas Kusibuafu also in that one there. This is the Daily Guide newspaper. The New Crusading Guide. The New Crusading Guide. Bank of Ghana buys 3,500 ounces of gold from Newmont. And Doma Central NPP supporters fight Ajiman Menu over poor performance. And embrace TVET to create employment. NPP Youth Organizer appeals. The new crusading guide there. The Insights. The Insights newspaper. Poor salaries and working conditions of workers. TUC beats war drums as Nagrat not threaten strike. So you have on the front page here, Mr. Joshua Ansan, the Deputy Secretary General of TUC. Angel Kabonu is Nagrat President and Thomas Tanko is also here on the front page of the Insight newspaper. National Cathedral, Imani demands accountability over the 25 million Ghana cities uh, seat money pumped into the National Cathedral. And uh, how Pastor allegedly plotted to kill thousands of black South Africans with poisoned water. Spanish court summons former U.S. Secretary of State over assassination plots against Assange. This is the Insight News paper. The Informer. The Informer. June 10, Green Ghana Day. Ghanaians warned against cash for seedlings. And Honorable Samuel Abdullah Jinapo again is here. Minority MPs demand for probe into EC's activities parliament not clothed with powers coalition says so and in this issue zaneto charges african leaders to invest in border communities to avert illegal arms trafficking that's the informal newspaper the inquisitor the inquisitor tomorrow is green ghana day let's go planting theme is mobilizing for a greener Future, pick up free seedlings from the Forestry Commission, uh, district offices, or other designated points nationwide. And for returning his ex Russia, Ubri Bwahin defends Togbi Afede. And Kukubot Toya, Lithovit fertilizer purchased based on experts' advice. Ambassador Daniel Ohini Ajikum says that one green Ghana seedlings is not for sale. Jinapo. There, that's the Inquisitor newspaper. The Herald, the Herald, a Kufado's cathedral bargain with God swallows 200 million Ghana cities' public money. And uh, Primo Oseo Paris is the chief of staff, Ken Furiata is the minister of finance, and said David Ajay, they're all here on the front page of the Herald newspaper. Tomorrow is Green Ghana Day. Let's go planting theme is mobilizing for a greener future. Pick up a free seedling from the Forestry Commission's district office or other designated points nationwide. That's also on the front page here of the Herald newspaper. And the tale of two Rasta boys from their parents. One good, the other ugly. And this is reported by the Herald. The Daily Statesman. Daily Statesman. 
Let's embrace Green Ghana as a national agenda. Land Minister Samuel Abdullah Jinapo says that one. And tomorrow is Green Ghana Day again, of course, carried by the Daily Statesman as well. Let's go planting. Theme is mobilizing for a greener future. Ghana confirms five cases of monkeypox. That's the Daily Statesman newspaper. The Ghanaian publisher. The Ghanaian publisher, and we still have the front, uh, on the front page of the Ghanaian publisher, the Green Ghana Day story, it says tomorrow is Green Ghana Day, and you have the president, the vice president, and the lance minister here on the front page. British envoy endorses, endorses Green Ghana Day, urges public to join initiative. Uh, Kufuado commissions $175 million infant cereal plant in Tema. That's the publisher newspaper the custodian the custodian green ghana project not partisan lance minister says so and uh the advertisement for the green ghana project let's go planting tomorrow is green ghana day is also here on the front page of the custodian newspaper now razak upoku kojo writes comparing apple tinubu to orange chiramatin is suicidal and NPP, NDC MPs clash over LGBTQI bill. CBG to go to private shareholders. There is a question mark there. And uh, that's a custodian newspaper. Business finder. Business finder. Dr. Baumi officially launches no guarantor for students loan scheme. And Commonwealth Business Forum. CBG MD engages British MP, and again, tomorrow is Green Ghana Day. Let's go. Planting is also here on the front page of the Business Finder. Business and Financial Times. Business and Financial Times. AGI DBG relations will support SMEs. That's uh, according to the Association of Ghana Industries. Transport hikes push inflation to 27.6% in May. And AGI pushes for duty exemption on raw material imports. Education, government invests over 131 million US dollars in latest TVET initiative. And Isaac Dubey is face of niche chocolate drink. Well, that's it on the front page of the Business and Financial Times as well. And this brings us to the end of the stories on the front pages of the newspapers. We'll take a quick break. When we are back, uh, we get into the discussions for the morning. My name is Chris Efri, and I'm sitting in for my boss, Dr. Randy Abbey. Stay with us. We'll be right. For six. Did, Did you, you say, say six? six? Open the app. Ding, Ding dong. dong. Bubble. Your favorite moment. Has your favorite ice cream. Ding dong. Bubble. Either go on. Order what you want. We can bring anything you want. Ding, Ding dong. Bubble. Order it now. Download the app. Order a global and we will deliver. Ding, Ding dong. Global. Trasaco Estates. Home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master planned community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call on 055-659-2658. Ghana for Madam Hisense in you. Yeka Hisense, Mwamu Nimse, a home appliance, a fe, a ye papa, and your power, the one so daffle. I sense our better approaching. So quality now now better on Ghana. And nothing a year now to so I am out. Five years manufactured defects warranty. 
say a refrigerator, chest freezer, air condition, television, sound system, water dispenser, microwave oven, blender, gas cooker, electric cooker, washing machine, smartphone, rice cooker, kettle, and our iron. Your host and seal talk. Now, so for my day, ain't you a born dear? Yes, yes, in a power, bia. Ain't you poor a high sense of rubia? Say a cra, tema, kumase, takradi, takwa, mankesim, obwase, sunyane, techiman, tamale, hohoi, kofoidia, konakwa jodie. High sense, everyday prices for everyday people. In the first two years, your baby will experience amazing growth in so many ways. To fuel it, they need the right nutrition. With Serilac, one bowl of goodness a day provides the wholesomeness of carefully selected grains, the iron plus which helps support brain development, and the yummy taste baby loves, assuring you the right nutrition in one bowl. Serilac. It's all good, Mum. This advert is FDA approved. I'm happy to be part of this great campaign. We are all complaining against the menaces of climate change. It is our responsibility as citizens of the planet to admit that we have contributed to these menaces. To try to correct them, we have to accept to green the planet afresh. So, Green Ghana is a great campaign that has come at the right time. I'm urging all of us to take part in greening our nation. The exercise entails our planting in one day as many as 20 million seedlings all over Ghana. And I assure you, when we do this, we'll be saving the future of the nation and, by extension, the future of our planet. So I urge all of you, men, women, children, institutions, schools, businesses, let us all join in and plant a seedling come 10th June. Are you ready? Minority in Parliament has since the peak of COVID-19 pandemic demanded accountability from government. They claim money is generated internally and some donated funds have been misused by the Ecuador led government. If you come to hand sanitizers, it is indicated that they spent 254.8 million Ghana cities. 254. I mean, you've asked whether we were buffing the the calls for a probe into the COVID fans intensified after a leaked audio of the second vice chair of the governor new patriotic party. The COVID fan came. I was given 50,000. My quota was 50,000 as a regional second vice. Then, who doubles as a parliamentary candidate for Sanargu? I had another 50,000 cities. For the minority, the leaked audio is evidence of the misappropriation of the funds. That, in fact, makes our call for an eminent investigation of the highly anomalous COVID expenditures pending to be probed. Subsequently, a leading member of the MPP, Arthur Kennedy, backed the call for a probe into the use of the COVID fans. We need to know that 
this money that was distributed, most of it went to members of the general public. After all, COVID was not partisan. It did not just affect MPP members. It affected all Ghanaians. The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bathing, following several calls from the minority in some NGOs, directed the Minister of Finance, Ken Furiata, to appear before the House to account for all COVID-19 related expenditure. The Con Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, we have never rested. We are, and especially when they refer to the chairman of the committee as delaying the bill, Mr. Speaker, I would want the House to know that I'm a senior member of this House and I'm competent enough. I'm a senior member at the bar, having passed out in 1995, Mr. Speaker, having practiced and having gone through the laws. This is a bill that we have to go through the processes and we have to take the time so that we will pass a law that will withstand the test of time. We just cannot rush through this. Last, during the, the recess, Mr. Speaker, the committee planned to travel and have some experience, what we call best practice. I only saw the memo when we had resumed sitting. We never got the opportunity to go on with the timetable. So I would urge the House if a question is raised and you are not a member of the committee, you may refer or defer to a member of the committee to actually give you an explanation. Since this is a method that the chair of the Constitution and Legal wants to use to delay that bill, that bill was in this house before so many other bills. I can assure you that any other bill you introduce in this house, we shall resist it. Even if it is to provide water in Aswansi, we will resist it. We will make sure that that bill as long as it stays there, no any other bill passes through this house. If you try to do that, we shall oppose it because we see that it's deliberate. You are deliberately uh, delaying the bill. So don't make excuses. Because if you wanted it to be fast track, you know what to do. If the government wanted to get that bill done, they know what to do. And what you are doing at that committee, Mr. Speaker, I'm repeating it to the chairman on his face. You are deliberately wasting time on the bill. You don't want the bill to come to this house. If this year, we've decided to plant 10 million seedlings in unreserved compartments and plant 10 other million seedlings across the country, on, in schools, in church compounds, mosques, uh, on the streets, in our homes, um, and in public areas of our country. So we are planting 10 million in forest reserves and planting 10 million across the country. We are calling on all Ghanaians, all residents of Ghana, and all persons who will be visiting Ghana to join forces with the government and join forces with the Ministry of Lands and, Forest, Lands and Natural Resources and the Forestry Commission for us to be able to make this noble undertaking and this momentous undertaking a resounding victory and a resounding success. This is what More than 1,000 confirmed cases of monkeypox have now been reported to WHO from 29 countries that are not endemic for the disease. So far, no deaths have been reported in these countries. Cases have been reported mainly, but not only among men who have sex with men. Some countries are now beginning to report cases of apparent community transmission, including some cases in women. The risk of monkeypox becoming established in non-endemic countries is real. WHO is particularly concerned about the risks of this virus for vulnerable groups, including children and pregnant women. It's clearly concerning that monkeypox is spreading in countries where it has not been seen before. At the same time, we must remember that so far this year, there have been more than 1,400 suspected cases of monkeypox in Africa and 66 deaths. This virus has been circulating and killing in Africa for decades. It's an unfortunate reflection of the world we live in that the international community is only now paying attention to monkeypox because... In Ghana, since 24th of May, 
Currently, we have confirmed five cases uh, in three regions, Eastern, Western, and Greater Accra. This is where we've found the five cases. No deaths has occurred among the cases. One of the cases has been recorded by in a Ghanaian who traveled to the United States from, from Ghana. So um, I mean, I picked it from here. It, it shows as fever, some swellings in the armpits and groin with the lymph nodes. We have headaches, muscle aches, and general body weights. That's how we were. And then, of course, then the rash and the blisters will appear. That's how monkeypox is. That doesn't mean that every rash is monkeypox. And there's clearly no treatment for monkeypox. Fortunately, it's a mild to moderate case, and so especially the West African one, is mild. State coffers are not spoiled for the party that wins an election, but resources for the country's social and economic development. I shall protect the public purse by insisting on value for money in all transactions. Public service is just that, service and not an, an avenue for making money. Money is to be made in the private sector, not the public, and measures will be put in place to ensure this. We must create wealth and restore happiness to our nation. We can only do this when we have an educated and skilled population that is capable of competing in the global economy. We must expand our horizons and embrace science and technology as critical tools for our development. Government is broke, government is broke. But people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. Um, borrow money of the future and eat it now. You all come back from that break. Um, we'll get straight into our discussions for the morning. But um, before that, let me quickly introduce my guests uh, seated here in the studio, the studio to you. And um, to my immediate left is... Um, Lawyer Eduji Tamaklo. He is a member of the NDC and, of course, a member of the <coughs> legal team of the NDC. Lawyer, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, us. my brother, and mm. good morning to Doc. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Bernard Okuboy is a chief executive officer of the National Health Insurance Authority. Doc, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, well. my brother. Mm, mm, mm. I hope you are doing well. Oh, I, I am doing very well. I hope you are doing well as well. Yeah, by his grace, I'm good. So we'll go straight into our discussions for the morning, and we'll begin with, um, I, 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 I hope that you saw the story on the monkey pox. Um, the director of Ghana Health Service uh, talking to us about um, the surge in it and the cases that are up. And there is an issue of um, resurgence of COVID as well, COVID-19. Yeah. So we'll begin with that briefly, and then we'll get into the National Cathedral issues. Yeah, so <clears throat> first of all, let me say a very good morning to all your viewers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, usually, um, mm -hmm. now when a disease is, is present in a particular population and is known, we refer to it as an endemic disease. So malaria is endemic in Ghana, but not in the UK. Whereas flu or influenza virus is endemic in the UK, but not in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you take monkeypox, uh, we say that is a maculopapular uh, rash disease, meaning it's a disease that shows in the form of rashes on the skin mm -hmm. that sometimes look like uh, uh, blisters. You know. it, it, 
is endemic usually in Dr. Congo, the central part of, part of West Africa, mm -hmm. meaning they usually have cases of monkeypox. Uh, once you start to record a disease in zones that usually don't have it, then we say that there's been either an outbreak or an epidemic. I mean, it's going to other places. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are making uh, noise or talking about it. Mm -hmm. It was first, I think, isolated uh, amongst monkeys mm -hmm. in 1958. Monkeys that were being used for research. You know, monkeys are one of the closest animals to us. You know, in science, we are all in quotes. We all belong to kingdom animalia. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we are higher animals. Higher animals. Uh, and then there's the other kingdom, which is plantae or plants. Mm -hmm. So it was first isolated in monkeys, which are being used for research. And I think the first time they recorded it in human beings was somewhere in 1970 uh, in Dr. Congo, that's Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, as we speak, there's been about five cases reported in Ghana. And they, they normally appear like uh, you, the symptoms are like fever, mm -hmm. joint ache, and then usually you start to see boils or blisters on your skin. Uh, all I can tell the public is that you got to keep your hygiene uh, very good. Mm. Usually, the general rule is that if your hygiene is good, mm. you are less likely to come across such uh, diseases. Mm. It's a zoonotic disease. It means it's normally harbors in animals. Mm. So when your condition is very filthy, you are likely to come into contact. The second thing is that, unlike COVID, which is highly contagious, this one, the good news is that it's not too contagious. Okay. But still, I'm so I was going well. to ask whether we should panic. I mean, oh, honestly, there's no need for panic. It is gotten through close contact, close meaning that body to body, either through hugging, kissing, coming into contact with fluid from the other person, yeah. or uh, exhaled air. Close when you are in a close space like this, mm -hmm. air condition. So I mean, uh, it's not strictly respiratory like COVID. Mm -hmm. This one can be spread through mm -hmm. sex, mm -hmm. body contact, and other things. So. Um, the advice is to keep your hygiene well, especially for people who are strangers. Strangers means that it's, they've come from other populations. You, you are in a company with drivers who have come from Burkina, from people who have flown from other countries. You have to keep your, your, your distance. It's very important. And uh, the mask is also good. Um, we've recorded a few cases of COVID. The last time I checked, uh, as of June 6th, we have 401 active cases mm -hmm. from zero it's, it's currently no. 452 52 yes 452 exactly from near zero we we're recording single decades just a few weeks ago now this should not cause an alarm mm -hmm. what this should rather do to the public or tell the public is that try and get the vaccine if you have not we have more than enough vaccines now mm -hmm. because covid more or less is becoming endemic or will become endemic meaning that we'll be living with it so just like malaria or like other diseases, once in a while you hear that your brother has gotten COVID and is recovered. What we want to avoid are critical illness and death. Severe critical. Mm. Meaning we don't want you to fall ill with COVID and be admitted in the hospital. And the good news is that the last time I checked, almost all the cases, none is severe or critical. It's an indication that the vaccination program gives real results. So if you are watching this program and for some reason you've not gotten the, the vaccine, please try and get a vaccine. For those who don't have a booster, I know two people who called me that they had some aches, severe pains, and immediately looking at the symptoms, I told them that, look, stay, isolate yourself, get some few medications. And it's classical. When they did the test, it was COVID. Mm. You know, so it's in the population. But what I'm happy about is that they had severe joint pains. Within a day, it was gone. But if they had not been vaccinated, all these folks who called me had been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, if the one who's been vaccinated is indoors, couldn't go to work with joint pains, what if there was no vaccination? So please, um, the vaccination is very important. The booster, boosters are available. Try and get a booster if you, you, you've not gotten it. We have it all over. In fact, we even risk expiring if we don't consume them. And like I said the last time, if anybody had died of COVID some two years ago when COVID broke. My brother is more of destiny than choice. Mm. But if today you allow you yourself die, to die through COVID, COVID, it is more of choice than, than destiny. destiny. Uh -huh. So it's very important. Right. Let, let me come to you on that one, uh, lawyer. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> before I proceed, uh, there is this um, very good friend, um, 
the Ambassador Zita Sabah Benson. Today mm -hmm. happens to be her birthday. Oh, wow. It's only proper that um, I use this platform mm -hmm. to do that. Now, um, on this issue of COVID and uh, monkey paws, um, well, he's a medical doctor, so I'll defer a lot of the medical issues to his superior knowledge and training. Mm. Except to say that with my little understanding of these issues, it's only important that at this point, the five cases of monkey pox that we know, there will be an enhanced contact tracing immediately yeah. so that we can know the kind of persons that these five people have come in contact with so that we can immediately begin the process of possibly isolating those people. And I've always, and the learning that I know, is that once you have some of these diseases around, the best way out is containment. How do you contain the disease from further spread? Mm. Uh, when I listen to the Director General, it doesn't look like there's a specific medication for it. I have been reading um, a few of the literature on this uh, monkeypox. It looks quite clearly that it's one of those experimental you know, diseases. Because if you look at its history, the first time the, the, those biologists, molecular biologists and others were able to trace it was in around the 1950s. And it has been basically within the Congo areas. But obviously because of human movement, settlement, mobility and others. It was, it's always easier to find some of these things moving from one area to the other. Mm -hmm. um, I, once again, will use this platform to urge our health authorities to move in immediately into contact tracing. Mm -hmm. Like Doc Riley pointed out, some of these matters involve issues of personal hygiene as well. Exactly. So we need to take those matters quite serious. Um, the most encouraging part relative to the spike in COVID cases is the fact that a greater number of our people today uh, have received the COVID vaccine. It makes it easier for the purposes of containment. So what I would encourage is that um, we should stick to the protocols. Yes, today the use of uh, masks and other things are not... Um, um, mandatory. However, even though they are optional, I always say that the first rule of life is self-preservation. Mm -hmm. It's self-preservation. So at all times, you must ensure that even within the community, you are well you are protected. Alive. You are alive. That's the first principle. So the fact that someone is not wearing nose mask, if you are within a certain environment and people are almost every day coughing, Nothing precludes you from protecting yourself. And so it is something that we should uh, encourage. And I've observed something interestingly. You know, during this COVID time and school reopened, and the kids were using nose masks. Issues of cold and others with the kids went down a little bit. Mm. Now that they basically opened the floodgate, <laughs> you see the kids come back home with small cold yeah. here and there. Yeah, you yeah. Know. In fact, from uh, the statement Dr. Patrick Kumar Bwaji made yesterday, mm. he had stressed that even though the president has allowed everybody to, I mean, you decide now to wear your mask or not, mm. he will advise that we should still wear the mask. Yes, I mean, it, it helps you, especially when the environment is extremely mm. um, crowded. Mm. I mean, there are some of the courts that you attend now, even the judges are still in their nose mask, mm -hmm. even though the thing is optional, because you have people from more walks of life coming into the courtrooms and what have you. So uh, I think with this said, again, like Dr. Assured, this is not something that we should panic. Mm. There are enough um, um, safety nets or safety measures that we have been put, uh, have been put in place. Mm. We should stick to it. And I'm confident that we'll be able to, as it were, contain mm. this issue of uh, monkeypox. Right. Uh, but, Doc, let me come to you quickly on the monkeypox for, for just a minute. Has government started any contact tracing? That's a uh, lawyer mentioned. No, it's, it's part of the 
management uh, of such illnesses. Mm -hmm. Once the director general has um, emphatically um, stated that we have five confirmed cases, mm -hmm. it means that the, the consequent action, which is contact tracing, is generated automatically. Okay. You don't diagnose and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, contact tracing is part of the management. And I'm also, uh, well, I will not say excited to say, but the science is that it's a self-resolving condition. Mm. So when you get it, you go through the motions of the fever, the rash appears, and then it will resolve. As in, it will be like wounds on the skin mm. that dry up, and then the, the skin becomes scaly, falls off, and then you have normally the, what's the word, the scar, mm. or the sign that it's like measles, when someone gets measles or chicken pox. Right. So it resolves on its own. Usually the, the, the treatment is only supportive treatment like paracetamol to handle the fever, mm -hmm. like fluids to make sure you don't get dehydrated mm -hmm. and all that. It is usually in rare cases that it becomes fatal. Usually it's one out of 10. If 10 people get it, it's one that can be critical mm -hmm. or face death. But in very severe cases, there are antivirals. We have drugs that are for the, we call it the pox viridi family. There are viruses that belong to one family. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where smallpox belonged. You know, today smallpox has more or less been eliminated. So there are uh, drugs for it. But luckily, you hardly need the drugs. People resolve the condition. They get well on their own. Yeah. Right. So um, let, let me now move to the issue about the National Cathedral. And uh, lawyer, uh, yesterday, Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, Member of Parliament for the North Tongue Constituency, he's also a ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, put up a release and some other documents to uh, support uh, the claims that uh, the Ministry of Finance doled out $25 million to the Secretariat of the National Cathedral. In fact, he goes on to reveal other figures which brings the amount to almost 200 million Ghana cities. And uh, I'll read a bit of it. And this morning he's put out another statement about some misconceptions uh, that people are trying to read into his statement. Then we get it from there. So this is a statement yesterday. It says... As promised, here are more calamitous revelations on unconstitutional payments made by the Okufado government purportedly to finance a cathedral project. On the 29th of October 2020, few weeks to the national elections, Ken Ufuriata, acting on the request by President Okufado's chief of staff, authorized the release of a gargantuan 142,762,500 Ghana cities for national cathedral plant activities. It is considerable consternation to note that contrary to legal requirements, uh, government concealed this enormous 142.7 million from Parliament as uh, they deliberately failed to disclose this item as part of the expenditure returns of 2020 during the 2021 budget consideration in Parliament. This 2020 cathedral expenditure was also kept away from the Auditor General in his 2020 audit. So for adding this latest expose to our previous leagues, the Kufuado government has spent a mind-boggling $199,832,603 Ghana cities of taxpayers' funds on a cathedral which was originally presented to Ghanaians as a personal pledge to God that will not be executed with the taxpayers' money. Unfortunately, Digging into the tons of documents divinely in our possession, we regret to report to Ghanaians that many more millions have been paid illegally, which we shall continue to put out to the glory of God and in, overall national, in the overall national interest. On the further scarier note, the figures we are releasing or we have are currently reviewing or we are currently reviewing do not look like anything near a seed capital. This 200 million Ghana City Cathedral Gate has turned out to be the biggest presidential scandal in Ghana's history. This is according to Okujito. I am ending halfway the letter, but he goes on to say that this is ungodly and uh, some other statements. There is a statement again from him this morning, and he's saying, I am not heaven's gatekeeper. I have never said a Kufuado won't make it there. Honorable Samuel to a black one. This letter I'll read halfway as well. I have the very first one, and uh, 
The Member of Parliament for North Tong, Mr. Samuel Lukujito Ablako, has denied ever saying President Okufuadu will not make it to heaven because he is constructing a national cathedral. Now, according to Honorable Ablako, those allegations are malicious and ridiculous. All those who have cared to listen to me on the matter in issue will attest to the fact that I have been consistent about the blatant constitutional violation, flagrant breach of procurement laws, and misplaced priorities at this time of excruciating economic crisis. Those have been my paramount focus as MP. Conscious of my constitutional mandate, Mr. Blacker said, now in a Facebook post, as Christians, the biblical injunction is not to judge others and to work out our own salvation. I am not one to ever pontificate who, on who qualifies to make it to heaven or hell. He added. Um, he goes on to explain the point that he didn't make the statement which is being attributed to him, that President Okufuado will not make it to heaven for building the National Cathedral. However, his concern has been about the figures and the seed money which has been released from the Finance Ministry to uh, the National Cathedral Secretariat. I was going to come to you, lawyer, but kindly indulge me. Let me take a quick break. When I come back, you will have enough time to do justice to the topic. <laughs> In the first two years, your baby will experience amazing growth in so many ways. To fuel it, they need the right nutrition. With Serilac, one bowl of goodness a day provides the wholesomeness of carefully selected grains, the Iron Plus, which helps support brain development, and the yummy taste baby loves, assuring you the right nutrition in one bowl. Serilac. It's all good, Mom. This advert is FDA approved. Over 18 years in business, Appointed Time Printing Limited has delivered quality service to some of Ghana's well-known brands. With our equipment capacity, we are able to deliver 1,500 pieces of polo and t-shirts in one hour. This is only possible with us. For retailers and wholesalers, we offer for sale high-quality polo shirts and t-shirts in different colors at affordable prices. We have a one-stop shop for all creative designs and billboards, 3D signages, flexi banners, car branding, stickers and posters. Locate us at the old GNTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade, Accra. Contact us on 0501-454165, 0501-454167. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Appointed Time GH, Appointed Time Printing Limited, our printing SS. Is... Burgers for six. Did you say six? Open the app. Ding dong. Bubble. Your favorite moment. Pass your favorite ice cream. Ding dong. Bubble. Eat it. Go on. Order what you want. We can bring anything you want. Ding dong. Bubble. Order it now. Download the app. Order it global and we will deliver. Ding dong. Global. Time and tide wait for no man. And with the increased cases of global warming, I assure you of the great work and policies the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has put in place to contribute to the global efforts at halting climate change. In the next two days, on behalf of the President of the Republic, Nana Adodan Kwakufuado, I encourage all Ghanaians of all shades and persuasions, residents of Ghana alike, to participate in the nationwide tree planting exercise. 20 million tree seedlings have been mobilized and have been distributed freely to everyone. You may pick up your free seedlings from any district office of the Forestry Commission, district assemblies, and or public places, and join us plant on June 10th to restore our degraded lands and vegetations. Green Ghana is a wake-up call and a great initiative to remind us all that nature begets nature. Indeed, I dare say that planting trees is godly. Green Ghana, let's go planting. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, boys and girls. 
mommies, daddies, gonna phone you now. I mean, everybody, you wanna fight climate change? You're back from the break. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in or keeping with us. I would, I would go straight to lawyer Eduji Tamaklo on the point I had raised um, about the National Cathedral. So in general and then, of course, yes. from uh, Honorable Samuel Okuji to uh, Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so thanks once again. As a believer of our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. I have no difficulty at all if believers decide on their own accord and volition to, as it were, build a cathedral to the glory of God. Mm. In fact, my brother Bernard Okoboy here, assuming that proud to becoming the CEO of the National Health Insurance Authority, had gone to see his pastor and prayed or asked for prayers mm. with the belief that the Lord God will touch the hearts of President Kufado to give him this appointment. And it so happens. And he decides that out of his salary, instead of paying 10% tight, he's increasing it to 30%. And he's giving that money to the Lord for the good thing that God has done for him. It is so perfect within his rights. However, where you have a situation where Bernard, having assumed that position, calls his director of finance to his office and says, Director of finance, I want a check of 200,000 Ghana cities from the funds of National Health Insurance. I want to go and donate it to my church as my pledge to God for the good thing that he has done. What Bernard has done in those circumstances is stealing from the funds of National Health Insurance. So you need to draw the distinction. Mm. One, it is all personal funds that he had decided to use to redeem a pledge to his God. Mm. The other one is the use of National Health Insurance funds for a pledge to God. So you need to draw that distinction. And that is why if you look, the NDC as a corporate body had always said, we believe in faith-based matters. The role of faith in the political you know, construction of this country cannot be you know, done away with. The schools, the churches, the political harmony, the peace, everything that churches, religious bodies have done we cannot do without them. So the church has always been a critical partner with the NDC in promoting the forward, uh, the forward march of this country. Now, if you recall the conversation about the National Cathedral, in the very beginning, we were told that Mr. Kufuado, then opposition leader, had pledged to God that should God make him the president of this country, he was going to build a cathedral to honor him. Mm. So my understanding initially was that this is a personal pledge. So possibly at the end of the day, the president's ex gratia that he will get as a former president, he will use that to build a cathedral to the glory of God. That was my initial understanding. Mm. Then the conversation changed that, okay, we are going to build a national cathedral. This time around, government is going to provide land and all that logistic support. That was the initial conversation. Mm -hmm. And so we saw very respected men of God in this country buy into that narrative. In fact, I have heard a very respected man of God, Reverend Oponi Frimpong, makes the point that as far as he is concerned, government or public funds are not going to be used in this cathedral conversation. Mm. And you see, because I have, you know, uh, mentioned his name, it's only fair that, that you I, have the proper quotes. Yes. 
the, I, I reference exactly what, what he said. said. And so if you look at Ghana Web publication, right. government not funding National Cathedral, Opuni Frimpong. And if, if, if you go into the story itself, and this is dated 13th May 2017, it was just around the time that Mr. Akufado had been, you know, inaugurated and staff and he had become president. And so this is Reverend Opuni Frimpong, General Secretary of Christian Council of Ghana. And he said, government is not financing the National Cathedral for Christians in the country, but only facilitating its construction, unquote. These were his words, without more. And so, by 2017, the conversation was that government was just going to, as it were, facilitate mm. the construction. And by facilitation, possibly provide land. Now, if you recall, where the cathedral is located used to house superior court judges. Mm. And those apartments were newly built. And so, the conversation at that time was that, look, it was too expensive having built those structures to demolish them for the purposes of building a cathedral. We're told that, you know what, to the glory of God, we do not want to impede the work of Nehemiah so that tomorrow you don't want to be called Tobiah or Sambala. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so everybody said, okay, I mean, if it's just about this one, let it go. However, my brother, it has come out that contrary to these claims, contrary to these assertions by these respected men of God, and at that time, in 2017, Reverend Oponi Frimpong was the president of Christian Council of Ghana. I'm also aware that on the National Cathedral Trustee Board, no other person but Reverend Onyina, Opokunina, a man I respect a great deal. I, his story encourages me a lot. Mm. A man I respect so much is the chair of the trustee, very respected, former chairman of the Church of Pentecost. No, you know, you, you cannot say any other thing in terms of his pedigree and integrity. I'm aware of other men of God, the, the Papa himself, Archbishop Duncan Williams, had also made a point about the extent to which government involvement of the project was concerned. Mm. And so therefore, the revelations that are coming out are beginning to contradict the initial claims and assertions made by these respected men of God. Now we have been told, and per the release that I have here, this is a letter from Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. dated 29th October 2020. Yes. It reads, Ray, seed money for National Cathedral of Ghana. Please refer to this letter from the Chief of Staff's Office of the President on the above subject matter. Now it reads, you are hereby authorized to release the sum of 142 million Ghana cities, amounting to $25 million for the purposes, and in fact, to the National Cathedral Secretariat to enable the commencement of planned activities. So this is it. Now, a warrant was subsequently issued, specific warrant, for the disbursement of the money, and it came from the Office of Government Machinery. I have the warrant as yes, well here. Yes. Now, if you look at all of this, like I gave the, 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 the example of uh, Dr. Koboy, this is direct use of public funds for these purposes. Mm. Now, you see, because this country anticipates the point where a president may be intoxicated with some level of religious fanaticism, or any other thing. This country is organized by what you call rule of law mm -hmm. and not rule of man. Now, if you look at our Public Procurement Act 2003, Act 663, Section 14 provides, and I want to just read, and, and, and 
thankfully my friend is also in the business of learning the law mm. just as I'm doing so you would appreciate section 14 provides this act applies to a procurement of goods services works finance in whole or in part from public funds unquote mm. now from all indications the 142 million Ghana City that was released to the National Cathedral Secretariat is public funds. Now, if this money, 142 million, which is public funds, then the next question is the use of this money, has it complied with the Public Procurement Act? Question. Now, all the evidence available shows that none of this has been complied with. None whatsoever. It is not only the 142 million. Another 32 million Ghana cities had been paid to David Aj for consultancy services. I was thinking that David Aj was going to provide this consultancy service, possibly as his gift to the Almighty God. But the available evidence shows that he had been paid a whooping 32 million Ghana cities, almost $6 million for consultancy work. Question, how was David Ajay and his services procured? When the money is public funds, now, what is critical is that at the time David Ajay's services were procured, he was not a registered architect in Ghana. In fact, David Ajay was inducted as an architect, recognized by the laws of this country, less than a month ago. In fact, there was a public event where he was inducted. Was his services procured through a competitive bidding process? Was his services procured through sole sourcing or restrictive tendering? So quite clearly, you will see that the use of public funds under these circumstances have been done in flagrant violation of the laws of this country. Mm. Not only that, another 25 million Ghana cities had been paid to Ribadi another company involved in this uh, cathedral project. Question, were these services procured in accordance with our Public Procurement Act? You see, the reason why I am a bit worried mm -hmm. about the procurement issue is that, if you recall, in the highly plagiarized inaugural address of the president, he made the point can I proceed? <laughs> can I proceed? Is there a threshold that when you cross? Now, that thing is highly plagiarized. Okay, plagiarized. Okay, I'll just leave it. <laughs> okay, boy, I decided to slow me. But it's, it's, it's okay. But you see, if you look at that inaugural address, mm -hmm. the president makes the point that I shall protect the public pairs by insisting on value for money. Now, when this Mr. Akufado became the president of this country, mm -hmm. as you are aware, his attorney general has taken some formal appointees of the NDC through our various courts for criminal prosecution. Mm -hmm. One offense that runs through almost all these accusations relates to alleged breaches of the Procurement Act. And in fact, as I speak to you, a client that I personally represented is in Isawan prison mm. for breaching the Public Procurement Act. So I find it extremely worrying that the president, who has had the courage to put others before the courts of this country, will supervise a situation where public funds will be dissipated in this manner. Nobody is against the building of cathedral. And, and I've always made this point. Look, 
Myself, Oko Boyle, and you. Mm. Obviously, without more, we associate with Christianity. Of course. The last time I checked, Church of Pentecost alone has about 3 million members mm. across the length and breadth, mm. you know. Mm. So that if we are even made, even for Church of Pentecost, for each member to contribute 100 Ghana cities, how much would that be? 3 million members mm -hmm. times 100 Ghana cities. That's how much. That's uh, 3 million times... 100 Ghana. 300 million. 300 million. So that alone would have provided a seed capital of 300 million Ghana cities for the cathedral project. Correct. Now, we have not even talked about persons associated with the Catholic Church, Anglican, Methodist, EP Church, and the other, like Action, Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry, and many other churches. So if you put together, mm. even if we are doing a work of even 5 million Christians in this country, contributing 100 Ghana cities, will be getting in excess of a billion Ghana cities to do this cathedral project to the glory of God without any involvement of the state. But you see, if you look at how the government of Akufuado had carried this um, um, national cathedral project, it is one of lack of transparency, one of opacity, a clear desire basically to move government funds into a project without the benefit of accountability regrettably because the national cathedral secretariat is no one quote unquote of a public institution mm. the difficulty is its activities are they subject to the work of the auditor general for which reason auditor general is, uh, um, johnson in ktr or yeah we say today, I am asking two auditors from my outfit to go into the secretariat and audit how the over 200 million Ghana cities that have been allocated to this office, how it has been expended. No search. And so it creates a problem of accounting. It creates a problem of accountability and the lack of transparency. So these are matters that you cannot run away from. You see... There's a certain level of impunity that appointees of Mr. Akufuado appears to embolden. Because, you see, I've been asking myself, mm. how in God's name can Minister Ken Oforiata look God in the face and do the kind of thing that he's doing to this republic? Look, I cannot for a minute... Imagine Setepe, Minister Setepe, attempting to do some of these things. And I say this because, you see, when you take public funds, and here, for instance, NHIS funds, and because my brother is here, you need authorization from the board. My brother, Oko Boy here, does not even have the power, because he's the CEO, to dip his hands into NHIS funds and do whatever he wants mm. to do with it. Mm. He will need to go to the board. Mm. He will have to go to the board because he recognizes that there's a law that governs his engagement. You see, the reason why we have the rule of law is that, you see, human beings, our conduct cannot be restrained. But when there is law, that one, you know the dictates. And that is why you cannot even use NHIS money for anything not authorized by the board. In this case, the representatives of the people, that is parliament, has completely been kept in the dark by Akufuado Baumia administration relative to this cathedral project. I have heard people say, okay, you know, in the past, oh, uh, uh, Muslims have built a national mosque, and for that matter, it, it, it is only fair. I mean, it's always important that we set a record. Mm -hmm. The current national mosque, just around the Jubilee House, behind the Jubilee House yes. enclave, was obviously the land was given by the government of Ghana. Remember that Rawlings Park used to house a mosque. 
and it was destroyed. Yes. And so this was given to them to compensate for that. Beyond that, public funds didn't go into it. A Turkish organization provided the funding for the building of the, the National Mosque. And that is what I have said. Nothing precludes persons who profess Christianity in this country to voluntarily contribute for the building. Even 100 cities from each one of us, a million, two million, three million of us alone can raise enough funding for this project. Now, if you have a situation where, as we are speaking, public funds amounting to 200 million, and I'm even picking Intel, that another 60 something million has also been spent. And you see, the level of opacity, but for the benevolence of persons involved in some of these transactions, wouldn't even know. Government officials are telling us that, you know what, yes, it's true, we spend this money, but this money came from the Office of Government Machinery. With the greatest respect, the Office of Government Machinery is not the private property of Mr. Akufado or Ms. Lisa Ken Oforiata. The approvals and the monies approved for the Office of Government Machinery mm -hmm. are from public funds. And the law requires that where a transaction is being financed, whether in whole or in part, from public funds, the Procurement Act will comply. My brother, as you speak, for the first time in the history of this country, mm -hmm. A constitutionally protected office or officer of this republic, I mean the Electoral Commission, Madame Charlotte Osse, was removed from office not because she had embezzled public funds, not because she had stolen from the, uh, you know, from the state, mm. on the basis of an allegation of the breach of the Procurement Act. It was enough for no other person but President Akufuado mm. to allow for her removal from office. Mr. President, where lies your moral authority to continue with some of the criminal prosecutions ongoing today in our courts when there is enough evidence of your own appointees with your own tacit approval breaching the procurement acts of this republic. Mr. President, you told us that you are going to protect the public purse with the benefit of hindsight, Mr. President. You have failed woefully in protecting the public purse. Now to conclude. Yes. You see, and that is in the minutes. Then yes, I can, yes. I can go to. You see, to conclude on this matter, possibly maybe I'll have another bite. Sure, sure. In one minute. Yes. Is that you see, as we speak today, school feeding caterers, and in fact, was coming. I was listening to City FM, City News, in the morning. They spoke to one woman called Juliana Kofi, the president of Greater Accra School Feeding Caterers, mm. and what were her concerns? That government owes them arrears. Arrears. Now, to wake up to know that a government that pays 70, no, 97 pesos per child, that is how much we are spending in feeding a child in this country. And government had made the point that we are unable to increase it because we do not have enough money. So you wake up one morning to know that by October 2020, our government has spent a whooping 142 million on a cathedral project. How would you feel? Right. How in God's name would you feel? And that not only. You and I have had the benefit of doing national service. Mm -hmm. I remember in those days, National service allowance is what was sustaining. Mm -hmm. Boys would say, I and I. <laughs> you understand, my brother? National service, the allowance. For the first time uh, yeah. in the history of this country, mm -hmm. we've had arrears almost three months. I understand they have taken an, a one month off 
of national service allowances in the face of the increasing economic situation in this country. Now to wake up to see that in March 2022, mm -hmm. government released 25 million for national cathedral project. Mr. Kufuado, with the greatest respect to you and the high office you occupy, you have no understanding of priority. All right. That's a uh, lawyer Eduji <clears throat> Tamaku on the issue of the National Cathedral. I have, I have some time for you as well. Yeah, Dr. So, Okubo. You know, Eduji has spoken for about 40 minutes. No, I, I have time for you. <laughs> 45 minutes. I mean, I'm keeping no, the time. To what? 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but the show, start, the show started how many minutes? And you know, but don't worry, I have, I have time for you. But well, obviously, not 45 minutes. No, like they always say, as a, as a see, party, yeah, that's when your story is time. good, it, it's short. You see, so, when, 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 <laughs> when, you see, <laughs> democracy is beautiful. <laughs> when the member, the member of the opposition yes, can yes. speak for close to one hour, it means life is good. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I. I think that we have to situate the conversation. Right. The last time that a certain woman came to break oil, expensive oil, mm. on the feet of Christ, those who were watching, this is God himself who had come down on earth in the form of a person. The question they posed was that, how can you who came to save the poor and the vulnerable be allowing your feet to be cleaned with a very expensive oil which could be sold to support the poor what was Christ's answer Mr. Host this, this, no, this 2022 plus years ago mm -hmm. his answer was that when he's gone to his father the poor will continue to be with us this is God speaking you know what he wanted to tell them don't take excuse in what someone believes and use that to accuse the person. Because that was the woman's choice of faith to honor him. The cathedral, I've actually sectioned my presentation. First of all, with all due respect, what we are building is not a church auditorium. I think there's a lot of work that the, the Board of Trustees must do. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I'm occupied at a uh, health insurance. Otherwise, we would have sat down to do some work. And I'll take my time and explain this to you. What is being built is not a church auditorium. We don't lack a place where we go and pray on Sundays. All the churches have places. What we are building is more or less, it's a facility that is owned, majority share ownership, by the state. But you have also the churches being trustees. Like, they would virtually own it on behalf of the state. It's not a private property. What is being built over there is not private. It's a state asset, but run and more or less owned by what? The, the church, as in the Christian community. If you watch it closely, it's going to have events. So, typically, the one as we mentioned is the swearing in of, let's say, the president annually. We do it at Independence Square. When this facility is built, that thing would happen at such an auditorium. The space is one of the biggest, I think, in West Africa. It can host, I stand to be corrected, but the number is, I think, is about 25 or 30,000. Indoor. Beyond that, there are other facilities that it would, um, um, it, will, it will house, like museums, which they've mentioned, and other accessories. Now, anytime you invest in a facility, Mr. Host, that more or less supports the activities of a particular people in the economy. You help to advance their activities. Mm. So who am I talking about now? I'm talking about people who host conferences. So it can be even those in private sector who want to hold very big conferences in Ghana and all that. This can be one of the venues. The church, if they want to hold very serious conventions, expecting thousands of people across West Africa, this can be a place to host it. And remember, all these things will not be for free. There will be some inflow that will come. So I want to repeat, what is being built is not a church auditorium. I know the communication has sounded like, now Ghana wants to build it. It is not that purpose. Now, because it is a cathedral, as the name suggests, 
It's a symbol that speaks to one of the faiths that is in this country. That's why you can go to a place and you see a huge mosque. Like you go to Dubai, you see some symbols that project Islam. It doesn't mean that everybody is being whipped to be a Muslim. But it's to tell you that one of their values is Islam. It's a similar thing. If anybody comes to Ghana and sees a huge cathedral, you go like, wow, you have Christians here. I mean, the faith. It's a symbol. Look, I, when I get there, I think I don't want to jump. When I get there, it's a symbol of value. It's a symbol also of practice. There are people who practice religion. It doesn't mean they will go there and have their church service. But it speaks to the world that when you come here, it's one of the faiths that's practiced. Now, it will be all, the majority shareholders uh, is expected to be people who believe in a Christian faith. Just as the National Mosque, mm -hmm. it was supported by a government from a, a, a Muslim mm -hmm. country, yes. It's, it's to show that in Ghana, we have people who cherish Islam. Now, the mosque, the National Mosque, I'm happy that my brother Eduji mentioned that the land, it's more or less... Uh, the donation from government. Exactly. Now, what it tells you is that that is also a form of seed contribution. Yes. If government are not giving them the land, it's possible that with all their works, they could have found it difficult to build a national mosque. So as you speak, is it fair for someone to ask, why did government prioritize the support of, let's say, a national mosque to using that land maybe to build a market? And you know what I'm saying? There are people in Ghana who cherish Islam. In fact, there are some, their work is Islam. Let's say, if you take, let's say, an imam. Mm. That's where they work. Mm. So, sometimes, government do things to support particular activities. You understand? The funding model. I think what is clear, and we must be absolute about it, government is not treating this project like it's doing, it does for, let's say, roads or for schools. We don't want to build it like from ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we want to find a model that will allow other investors, whether it's practitioners of faith as in Christians, or just like the, the National Mosque that the Turkish helped, if it, it's even the U.S. government. We just want a model that will allow other participants to raise the church. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to sleep totally. We want to support the raising of the church. Mm -hmm. And that's why we gave the land. And I'll come to the seed money and say what I understand. Mm -hmm. So, um, this talk of, oh, there are people, economy is hard, people are suffering. Mm -hmm. Why did you give... Uh, about close to twenty uh, million dollars released to mm -hmm. the, the 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 board or the build of natural category. With all due respect, mm -hmm. at the time we built the Snit Emporium, Mr. Host, mm -hmm. the Snit Emporium, mm -hmm. it has about it can house about four thousand people outdoor. Mm -hmm. It has indoor facilities mm -hmm. at Buko. Mm -hmm. My brother, when they were building that facility, it's worth millions of dollars. There were people in Buko who struggled to eat. But if you are not careful. If you say, let's spend time and eradicate poverty before you build such a facility, it will never show up. Yet, it is helping to raise talents in the same book home. People who trade in boxing. It's helping to house conferences that private sector holds, or mm. central government. They pay about mm. 15000 mm. a day mm. for the facility. Mm. It is stimulating activity in certain sectors of the economy. So, we have to be careful when we try to use the poor to say that facilities must wait until the poor is taken care of. Yes, at the same time, we have to look at how to provide a social net to support the poor. But if you are not careful, and look at when Christ came, 2,000 years ago, men in that era and women spoke the same language. Mm -hmm. Why do you allow oil on your feet when people are hungry? So we have to be careful. Governments over time, and Nana Edukufado has done an excellent job at that, do their best to reduce poverty levels and to cover more people, protect them. But... I don't know who will be the last person to let poverty live. It, it's, it's a task that is ongoing. Cape Coast Stadium. These are things you might... You know, I practiced in Central Region when I started. Mm. There are times I've driven past the Cape Coast Stadium and the stadium is asleep. Mr. Host. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it sleeps for a year. When I say asleep, no activity. The question I ask myself, was it a worthy investment to put millions of dollars in this facility when I know people in Cape Coast who struggle to eat a day. If you are not careful, you say, oh, you shouldn't have built it. But it's a facility that serves a purpose. It can help to develop talent. It can help to promote football. It can help to do a lot of things. Mm. So, a Sipon Stadium, sometimes one year is asleep. No, nothing there. But you have to be careful not to discount it or discredit it because there are people who are hungry in that part of the country. Now, 
I have heard argument with that said, oh, but Ekufuado made a personal pledge to his God. Mm. Why is he trying to use our money? Mm. Have you wondered why President Mills, it took him to have a national hockey pitch? The man is someone who believes in sports. He was a serious hockey player. Those who, ro those who rode with him, like we say in our modern terms, will tell you that he was one of the best players we had in, in hockey. Yes. That conviction and value he had mm. affected his plans, which resulted ultimately in the building of Ghana's national hockey pitch. Mm. Usually, the values that leaders hold and the things they hold dear, some way, somehow translates in the activities and programs when they lead nations. It's a host. It's not by accident mm. that national hockey pitch was built when May so rest in peace, uh, peace uh, Prof. Mills was president. Was the president. So I say, ah, but look at this man. He's trying to build a hockey pitch. Why? Is he a personal? It's going to be right. No! Mm. There are people who play hockey in this country. It is promoting that sector of sports. Although it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a personal value of practice he cherished. So we have to be careful about some of these statements. Now, who said that the protection of kids through a program like the Free SHS is not a value that the Kufuado holds? It's not everything we say in public. But there are meetings President Kufuado sat in he had to contend with his own. I know of meetings where president had to take on his own people about the need to start free SHS in the first year of his government. There were some who thought that, well, you have to take your time. You need some 24 months to look at the fiscal, get some money. You know why he said the first year? It's been his long conviction that the best way to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor is to fund education, no matter the cost. It's a conviction. It's a value. He holds to his God. He has translated it into a national program. Not even Nkrumah, may he so rest in peace, mm. and I have a lot of regard for him. Mm. When Nkrumah started, he did it for the North. But that's how we are as human beings. Sometimes when you do the unthinkable, it becomes normal. Oh, but what is it? But in those days, when Nkrumah held the North and said, go to school free, it was, it was unprecedented. It was a remarkable feat. Convictions translate into programs. And that's why it's not by accident that Ghana became a republic, the fourth republic in 92. Mm. And he's the first president who says that no matter the cost, I am going with it. It's a conviction. Let me come to the cathedral. Right. We've heard reports that he promised his God. But the next question I want to ask mm. is the cathedral when built going to be there? Are, you know, there are rich people who have private mosques or private uh, churches. Yes. It's not going to be a private church. It's a national asset. This is an asset that will generate income over years. Ghanaians visit Paris and go to the Eiffel Tower. When they were raising the Eiffel Tower, Mr. Host, mm. it cost millions. I will not be surprised in modern terms if it will cost a billion. There were people in Paris who could not feed themselves. Mm -hmm. There were individuals in France who didn't have decent accommodation. But they wanted the tower to be a symbol of courage and freedom in Europe, mm. and they built it. Mm. Seed money, I stand to be corrected here. What I know is that when we approve monies in Parliament, some is voted to the office of the President. Some have a tagline or a name, like this one is to Zongo Fund, this one to those institutions that come. Mm. But there are some which are for operational purposes. Mm. He knows. Mm. If you ask JM, he will tell you. If you ask, what's the name of the, uh, pre or the former Julius Debra, he will tell you. For staff. There are monies in particular pots which are used for activities that have not been mentioned explicitly. But they are done to show government's commitment to the project. So I'll give you a few examples. If, let's say, National House of Chiefs, where they meet, is uh, run down by fire, they can vote some amount for innovation urgently. Mm. It will come from the operational cost. But during the time of reading the budget, it, it may be, uh, it, it is uh, possible that it, it wouldn't have been captured exclusively as an item that would be carried by the state. Mr. Host, they know these things. They've been in government. 200 million. Mr. Host, the amount that was voted is not 200. It's about 20 million US dollars. The, the one that I saw, 147 million. Like I'm talking about US when mm -hmm. you convert. 
at, at the time, they yes, exchanged between 5.71 Then they had been subsequent payments. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. the point I'm making is that if that amount is bigger than what is in the port, you can ask all kinds of questions. I don't have a problem with mm -hmm. that. But the point I'm making is that government usually has a port at the office of the president, yes. which is meant to be used for operational things. Mm -hmm. So government has one of its commitments. And by the way, when Ekufado pays a visit to Northern Regional House of Chiefs, the envelope as part of tradition we give to the chiefs is not coming from his private pocket. It's part of operational tools for government. Assuming that instead of, let's say, 5,000 an envelope, we give them 50,000 because they have some painting they have to do, it wouldn't have been captured in the budget. But remember, that 50,000 has been approved in the port for operational purposes. Office of Government Machinery. Exactly. So, you see, we should be careful. There are many occasions where the opposition have indicated that an act is illegal. This is unlawful. Like you said, the person should have been a war against looking But the case went to court, and the judges ruled that it is not so. So we should go to court. I'm, no, I'm not saying so. You see, I just want to remind viewers that sometimes, I'm not saying he has malice, mm. but sometimes a politician can say that an act is very blatantly illegal mm. to create the impression that there has been wrong. Mm. But when you go to the forum where wrong is determined, mm. it comes back that there was nothing wrong. Mm. So I, I will not judge on this matter. But my small experience in government and parliament shows that there is some particular pot that normally government has yes. from which they can they make certain kinds exactly. of expenditures. And look at the term they use. They say seed money. We, they use the term seed because government, as part of our funding model, we don't want to pay for this structure. It's not like a school building we will capture and say it's $200 million, we are allocating 10 percent. No. So it's seed money. If anybody says that, okay, let's go and investigate and see whether this money was within the port is well i don't have a problem but we shouldn't speak as if governments cannot allocate funding for certain activities based on the commitment from the top that one is possible now it's also very important to say that the 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 cathedral have you been there i've passed there have you seen what is happening i have my brother. It's actually on the screen. I have. Yes. The current, the uh, yeah. its currency. My brother, have you seen the, what they've ducked? Yes. Do you and see the machines there. Do you see, I have seen them. Do you see men at work? Yes, I do. You see machines moving up and down? Yes, I do. When they speak about economic activity, although they've used the term cathedral, that is some form of activity going on. So what I ask myself, if president, the president or government commits an amount mm -hmm. to a project which ensures that you have people going up and down, building, buying cement, paying for labor, mm. carpentry, consultancy. Mr. Host, really, really, is that waste uh, of public funds? It depends on who is, who is talking. If it's, it were to be a phantom project, Mr. Host, phantom meaning it's difficult to see where the thing is happening. But you go to a place... You see physical construction. You see men on the ground, heavy machinery moving. You see iron rods. The last time when I saw the basement, I was like, wow. You see heavy materials. And yet terms like wastage of money is used. I would say it's wasted because we are in difficult economic times, but money went into something which is supposed to be a cathedral. I'm not too sure, especially when people will be paid this economic activity. Maybe it's about, even when you say priority, but those working there, if there were no cathedral project going, where would they be this morning? Maybe they'll be unemployed. These are things that you normally don't hear in the conversation. But a cathedral project, just as you might be building a dam, it's like it's an infrastructure project, mm. you know. So these are things that we also have to uh, take into um, uh, cognizance or into consideration. Now, let me also say that I've mentioned a global amount. Global means they commit an amount to operations and from yes. it you have lines and yes. all that. I've heard my brother, uh, you know, he went to Presec. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you're a Presec, I don't speak too much about your issues. Mm -hmm. one, so I'll spend one minute with him. He said that, oh, it was, this is a capital project. But the thing, this one, the funds for government machinery is goods and services. But it's not capex. Those are technical things that I would not like to judge on. But I'm even happy that he admits that we have some ports from which you can have goods and services. And by the way, when you have a construction of the size of the cathedral, it's not everything that is capex. Although it's capital project, you have some services as part. 
All this, if we want to go into the bottom at the base, it's not for Okute to or Eduji or myself because we, we are biased. Let's give it to, like, go to the place where there will be, um, how do you call it, uh, there will be independent, objective opinion. Now, let me lastly say that there is a reason why the cathedral, I mean, we, government wanted to place it where it is. When you go to most countries that have positioned themselves as gateway to their region, mm -hmm. they have huge platforms for holding seminars. And when you watch, usually they are all in a particular enclave. There is a reason. So that they want to come, if it's a two-day program, within the 48 hours, they want to assess the main places that matter. If you go for a conference, let's say in Dubai or in New York, you want to go for the conference, visit the shop, get to see the, uh, their uh, presidency and just move out. Mm. It is one of the reasons why positioning happened that they wanted to position where it was. Mm. You know? So my, my simple take is that we have to send the message well. And uh, I think when it comes to the marketing and selling a project, it hasn't been done well. um, I think we can improve on it. You see, because there are occasions where there is commitment. It's a state asset when it's done. So you have government players either speaking or acting like this chief of staff letter and all that. Then you have the board of trustees. When Dr. Williams said government doesn't intend to use money, that thing is largely true. You know what I'm saying? So Because we don't want to use $200 million of state money to build a cathedral. But we also don't want to sleep and, don't wa and, and not watch it grow. So if they are struggling in the beginning, we are willing to commit this amount from the pot to stir up but, but the belief it. of everyone has been that taxpayers' monies are not going to be used. Oh, but that's what... And, and, no, and no. from the beginning, there yeah. had been arguments from yeah. a section of the public yeah. Yeah. that, well, if it's a president's personal yeah. commitment yeah. and he's going yeah. to commit yeah. his yeah. own money to it, yeah. especially when yeah. the code for contribution yeah. had come out, yeah. it was more of us, yeah. individuals, making yeah. contributions, you know, making sure you that... Know, that and now we hear yeah. that... You know, there, there, are two, there are two things I'll say. Mm -hmm. The assets that we give to support the National Mosque, mm -hmm. that asset mm -hmm. is for all of us. Mm -hmm. You're giving a lot no, for, for, for coming, the cathedral. No, I know. Yes. Yes. That's why I'm saying that that asset could be in terms of money. We could have used it to maybe do a social net, but we gave it to support the mosque. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we do it because we want to send a signal that there are people within this country who hold on their faith and to support them. Now, I gave you the pot example, the, the money that sits at Jubilee House. Mm. But why should we use government money to give to some house of chiefs, the taxpayers' money? So I ask, is that worthy expenditure? But chieftains is part of our institutions. So I ask, why would operations money at Jubilee House be used to renovate houses of flood victims? Sometimes lines like that come out. So I ask, why are you using the taxpayers' money for someone who decided to build at a funny place? So the point I'm, these are matters of either discretion or opinion. So you see, how long comes that? No, 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 maybe. please. The second. understanding no, no, no. we had no, no, no. was that, so, uh, I mean, somebody yesterday said that yeah. um, by now, if you yeah. had told the truth, yeah. government had told the truth, yeah. that at the point, we are yeah. going to give um, some form of taxpayers' yeah. money. Yeah. Into, into this project, yeah. the conversation would have been done by now. No, Everybody would have been settled. What? But you the see, belief is yeah. that whatever you know, you know, it may be... I, I have told you that mm -hmm. we can improve on the marketing and communication of the whole project. But let me so say... You, you, no, 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 you, no, you, you agree? Down. No, calm down. You see, initially people mentioned legality. Mm -hmm. I've told you that I'm not an expert of the law. Right. But I know that usually there is a port. Yes, you know, which, which we have explained that. very well. The second one, if I tell you I'm doing dry fast, mm -hmm. my motive is to fast. Mm -hmm. If along the line I feel dizzy and you see me with some apples, it's because of the difficulty I had. It doesn't mean I told a lie in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Government wants this project not to be funded from our coffers with taxpayers' money, mm -hmm. Mr. Host, but with funds from um, either people of faith or from other contributors. Mm -hmm. If there are difficulties, it's not moving as planned, and there is a pot from which we can use to stimulate it. Is that what? Yes. Lie, there's, there's a difference between an untruth and a lie, mm. or something which is not factual and a lie. Mm. When you use the term lie, it means it was deliberate. 
there is malice in it. Mm. Like it means I know I'll take some apples at two, mm. but I tell you I'm fasting. Mm. That one, if you know my motive, then I'm telling a lie. But if I had difficult challenges, and that's what's made me take take it, my situation might be an untruth because I said I would do dry fast. But that's why I'm telling you a lie. So basically, all I'm saying is that as we speak, still President Kufuado doesn't want Ghana to cough out two hundred million dollars to build this cathedral, and that's why he went to the states to bet to rally support for it. But because of the commitment we have, it's a host, because of the commitment, if there is any line which will allow us to push them, that's what Duncan Williams said, and it's still true, that they want to fund this from other sources. It's factual now. And by the way, this letter from Chief of Staff, it's not a secret document. You know it's a public document. Mm. <laughs> so I would like to plead. You know, sometimes some terms are used and it creates the impression of wrong. Right. Oh, um, oh, Mr. Oz, you should be interested. That they uncover. <laughs> no, no. If Frema, yes. my own mother, yes. writes that, please release this amount. Mm. It means that it's not meant to be shouted in secrecy. Right. It is, like I said, is to help stimulate the activity. Mm. And we still will do our best to get funding from other sources. And uh, the issue of priority, remember I told you, is similar to what happened in Christ's time. When you have the poor, is it worthy to use expensive oil on the feet? People are working there. There are people, this will generate money over time. And instead of trying to go like, it's a personal commitment for the president. Please, this is a national asset. It will be for all of us. If there are any uh, IGF, income generated funds from it, it will be a Duji's money, it will be my money. Right, thank you. And uh, let's go for a break. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'll come to you. I'll come I to thought you, that I, you gave me a quick. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. Just two minutes, yeah. a quick. I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. I'll give you that. But I want you to be adding the next topic okay. right uh -huh. from there. So okay. um, I, I will introduce that very well. so that when very when I give you that, we'll be able to manage it. Very well. Very well. So <laughs> inflation has come. <laughs> we, we are discussing national cathedral. Like that. We are coming for. <laughs> if you like the second round of it, but sure. inflation jumps from. Uh, jumps to 27.6 percent in the month of May 2022. This is a very, very, very serious one, and in, uh, we are in very serious times. I'll read this one. It says inflation in Ghana has hit 27.6 percent for the month of May 2022, according to the Ghana Statistical Service, compared to the 23.6 percent recorded in April. This represents a four percentage points jump in the inflation rate. On a monthly basis, inflation, however, dropped by 1% to a record 4.1% in May 2022. So this was captured in the CPI uh, data released by the Ghana Statistical Service. However, um, government is still eyeing the 8% inflation target despite recent increases. And this is according to Dr. John Kuma, who is the Deputy Finance of, uh, Minister of Finance. It says, John Kuma, a Deputy Minister of Finance, says the government still has uh, its sights set on stabilizing inflation around 8% target. And of course, that should be by the end of the year. This is despite inflation continuing to rise, reaching 27.6% in May amid cost, a cost of living crisis. Mr. Kuma said on radio that where we are uh, is not overboard and we are not, it's going overboard and we are not happy with it. But we strongly believe that we'll quickly come back within the target of 8%. He added. The rest, um, this, was, this is captured by City News. And uh, the rest is the details of um, the story as given by the Ghana Statistical Service. The, how each of the sectors did on the inflation um, calculation. So, lawyer, so I'll, I'll give you I'll, that one yes, and then you, you can come into I'll this I'll dovetail one. into this. Right. You see, right. when uh, my friend who is learning, <laughs> let me just say that. <laughs> Did you have to stress <laughs> yes, that? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, when it comes to medicine, I know he will deal with me. He will also say you yeah, are yeah, Yes, yes. <laughs> you see, he started with a very beautiful mm. analogy mm. Um, with the woman who approached Christ our Lord with the perfume. Mm. What my friend didn't tell us is that the perfume the woman approached Christ was was not a state oil or state perfume. She didn't buy the perfume with state funds. This is like Oko boy trying to dedicate part of his salary to bless his pastor. That's different. 
we are talking about public funds. Mm. So this analogy, with, with the greatest respect, bro, it doesn't do justice to the matter. Why? My brother Oko boy here. How many times have we not had a conversation about the Nigerian hospital that has been brought mm -hmm. down? Mm -hmm. If faced with the decision, 25 million Ghana cities, or 25 million dollars, October 2020, and seed money for cathedral, you mean you leave the jar, uh, la, jar hospital and vote that money for cathedral? Talk. Please. Now, he made this point in a very desperate attempt, again, to absolve President Akufado from this reckless use of public funds. Is to create the impression that, oh, you know, Professor Mills built a hockey pitch. Oh, Doc. You had forgotten that Ghana had won the bid for the All African Hockey Competition in 2009 and needed a hockey pitch for the All African uh, uh, Hockey Competition. Please, how do you even draw an analogy between a hockey pitch built for? an international competition to a cathedral. In any case, with the greatest respect, the church you fellowship, are they lacking auditorium for the purposes or urgent purpose of even a church program? Now, I've heard this conversation that, you know, the, the oh, the, uh, you know, Mills built this, and then uh, so, so, and so. Look, that Hockey pitch was established for the all African competition, hockey competition. Mm. That's clearly distinct. Then he goes to the Emperor built. You see, sometimes, look, there's something called poverty alleviation programs. The state intervene. If you recall, and, and the record is there, some of Ghana's greatest boxers have come from Bukum, correct? Please, 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 please. Preachers have come from Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm convinced that we are going to have a teaching, uh, you know, a teaching, uh, maybe a school within the cathedral. But on a, on, on a more serious mm, note, mm. some of our best, brightest boxers had come from Bukum and his Envaro. So the idea was build a facility that allows for the training a facility that allows for these young boxers to up their skills. Mm. That's proper social intervention. And it is done globally. How do you compare that to a cathedral? Look, what we should not, you know, lose sight of is that President Akufado was deliberative relative to his pledge to protect the public purse. And like Atta Kennedy the other day asked MPP members in the U.S. He said, today, if MPP had to be judged on the sole basis of the protection of the public purse, what would be the verdict of the people of this country? If you have failed woefully in the question of protecting public purse, why? Have we not heard the regrettable utterances? of your regional women uh, uh, vice chair, Mrs. Uh, uh, Felicia Tete, on this question of how much COVID money was spent and shared. Why? Today, we have seen the stonewalling, the firewall MPP MPs have built around any conversation about auditing COVID funds. Now, it is clear that the only irresistible conclusion to draw is that MPP parliamentary candidates in the 2020 election, from the testimony of Mrs. Felicia Atiti, were giving monies from COVID funds. Is that the reason why the MPs are resisting the audit, knowing that an audit will expose them? This is public funds for Christ's sake. You see, on this issue of... Um, the inflationary pressures yes. that uh, we are having. Mm. You see, there's something about this economy. It doesn't have room for talkers. 
It doesn't have room for braggarts. Today, where is our vice president, Dr. Baumia, the chairman of the economic management team? When was the last time you heard him speak directly to the current inflationary pressures? Look, it is, you see, this whole conversation is not strange. My brother, this year, government of Ghana is spending 45 billion Ghana cities on interest payment and amortization alone. We are doing additional 33 billion on salary payment and emoluments. 26 billion on statutory funds. Now, when you manage an economy into this regrettable position, these are the fallouts. I am not surprised. Mm -hmm. Now, two weeks ago, the governor of Bank of Ghana said he is surprised at the, the, the level of inflation. He's lost the plot. Look, this is the only incompetent administration that I have seen where you have a set of players, they are taking you down into a ditch and you are still keeping them. Nothing precludes you as a president. If you are really in charge, not this autopilot administration that we have, to begin to change some of the people. Because... If a group of people creates a problem, how do you put the same people to resolve the problem? You know, there is one quotation that I've always kept from the respected man of God, Pastor Otabel. He said, when you find yourself in a hole, what you don't do is that you don't dig more. Because you want to come out. This is a government that is in a hole and it is digging more. Whether it is a problem of wisdom, I don't know. See, we established what became known as ESLA. You remember the Energy Sector Levies Act in the year 2000, uh, 2015. In the ESLA Act is the issue of price stabilization levy. And if you eat, read the Act, sorry, you see that the Act says that the purpose for the price stabilization is that in times of difficulty and crisis, the proceeds from those funds should be used to cushion the sufferings of Ghanaian. Mm. If you listen to the current inflationary numbers that have come out, they say it is coming from the transport sector, mm. resulting from the increase in fuel prices. What has been Ken Oforiate's response to the use of the price stabilization and the accruals? That they are put all into the consolidated funds. This government simply lacks the question of accountability. This is an act of parliament established purposely saying that dedicate a certain amount over two billion so that when there is crisis, you deploy that money to cushion Ghanaians. For the first time in the history of this country, we are selling a gallon of diesel, about 50 cities. Today, if you have 100 Ghana cities, you can't get two gallons of diesel. No. You can't. This is not your promise to Ghanaians. And I am sure by the time my brother is done, mm. we'll hear COVID, we'll hear Russia, we'll hear Ukraine. What about the over 40% mm. taxes, margins, and levies on petroleum products? So it is clear that as for the clueless bank of Ghana, they don't know what is happening. The Problem, and you know, unfortunately, Bank of Ghana is clueless. completely. Ah, when your governor of Bank of Ghana says he is surprised about your inflationary measure, and you know, unfortunately for him, he believes that the inflationary issues are coming from his office. So you know what he does? He goes and either increase or reduce the policy rates. The MPC. Yes. And the net but effect... It, it's, it's able to some way somehow tackle it. If please, you, how? If you work on your policy from rate, the, No, but from, the time the, man, from the time the man did the increase in the policy rate, the rate has gone up. Inflation. And now, statistics is telling you that the, 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 the pressure is coming from transport. The, the effect has to be... Okay, well, if... if do, we do you get it? Because you see, this is like weights. Because the anticipation also is that people who... Um, you see, the man... No, the man back, was thinking that... Would think that the man that was thinking... The man was thinking that... So there was, no, the man was thinking that... The man was thinking that... There's so much money in the system. Mm. 
So by increasing the rate... He's working with the economics. Please. You encourage people to possibly buy government securities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, you mop up mm -hmm. excess liquidity from the system. Mm -hmm. Regrettably, that is not the issue. Mm -hmm. It has turned out that that is not the issue. Right. My brother, as we speak, if today it will cost you 200 Ghana cities to move from Accra to Tamale, and you have to go there and buy items to come and sell in Accra, mm. what has excess liquidity in the system got to do with All right. It? And so what we need to do mm -hmm. is that, and now at this point, I think we all need to, you know, intervene mm -hmm. on behalf of our vice president, who today speaks more of IT than the critical issues of the economy. That where we have gotten to, you are rounding up. Yes, I'm just thirty seconds. Him because of where we have got, yes, where we have gotten to now, Ghanaians are suffering. The vice president is suffering. Akufado himself is suffering. Oko boy is suffering. <laughs> NHIS is suffering. <laughs> Everybody is suffering. So I'll beg <laughs> Oko. I know he has a is lot it? of he has a lot of arrears <laughs> to clear. <laughs> Service providers are on him. He can't sleep. So I can me, see from his eyes. Let me come to you now, uh, Dr. Okubo. Oh, and, uh, if, <laughs> inflation is 27.6%. Uh, Mr. Host, you know, my brother mentioned the lady, one of our executives in the north, who made claims yes, about Yes, 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 yes. I was a candidate in the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. I didn't get funds to allocate to people from COVID. Mm. Did you get support from the party? No, no. I mean, I didn't get any funds. No, I did you get the support party. from the party? No, no, no. I mean, if you say support, I mean, we are politicians. We look for resources to campaign. But in terms of COVID, that I've been giving, let's say, 10,000, 10,000. So you got support? Share. No, I didn't. No, you are changing the thing. We're talking about COVID funds. <laughs> 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 Even JM went for support. Everybody went for support to go for election. So this one is so, the bailout. I'm, so <laughs> you are being distracted. Can you focus? Yeah, I'll focus on you. I know so, um, I'm happy that mm. my brother is a lawyer. <laughs> you know, people make claims. When you go to court, it's not your claim that they work with. You know, we have what, what you call cross-examination, looking at what you are saying, credibility and all that. So, I mean, sometimes on platforms, when we have such audios, it's important to hasten slowly. You know, so that th those would be my comments. Mm. Now, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, my brother Duji used brancards and talkatives before he came to him. You know, oh. there's, oh, but I've written it. It was, it was not a direct quote. You know, we've all done English. You know, the way you went around it before you even mentioned a man. You say, you know, sometimes this is the time to uh, call out or to, uh, you know, uh, people who are braggarts and talkatives. <laughs> <laughs> then you say that, where is Dr. Baumia? <laughs> You see, oh, so there was yeah, there was a background. No, yes. oh, before this clever this clever So <laughs> he, I know where he was coming. Yes. Look, mm. I've said it before. I'll repeat it. Mm. The single most important human resource we have in this country, going into the next twenty years, is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Mm. And the practice and the history is there to show. <laughs> We were told in this country that where is all the loan? Where is all the money you borrowed? We don't know what you've done with it. The man spoke for two hours, 45 minutes. And since then, I've not heard anybody ask me questions. Luckily, I brought a lecture here. Hard copy. I'm surprised. He showed all the loans, the projects. Mm. Obechebi, the flyover, is taking shape. In the next six months, I will not be surprised if we start to open it. That is a loan. If you pass through spin test palace, those who use the spin test, they can see the works going on. That is a loan. When you go to Legon, you see the stadium coming up. That stadium was asleep under GM. It slept for a while. It's woken up. When you go to Regimental Real Estate, those who use, they'll tell you. There's a, a dual carriage that is parallel being done by Simei. Let me take the opportunity to congratulate the contractor. Doing a wonderful job. <clears throat> breaking, it's breaking the back of traffic along all that corridor. That is a load. When you take the uh, beach road, there is a project from Independence Square all the way to um, Community 3, the harbor. Hey, but you see, Oko okay, Boy, there's something you've oh, done. Allow no, me you, there's something you've done. You know, this, my senior you know, this, this Pinterest Road project, the one Simeon is It doing. started on a GM. 
you know now yeah. when you came, <laughs> no, when they came, they stopped it. Mm -hmm. Now they saw the wisdom in it and decided to continue. Okay, thank so you. create that <laughs> thank you, see the thank foundational you. issue. <laughs> but you know the good, you know the good thing. You see, I listed a number of projects that were asleep. And they didn't come. But this one he came in. Oh no, I'll be so coming to the others. others. I'll ah. be coming to the others. But brother, that's fine. Someone called me from Nungwa, <laughs> that's crow up. He said, Doctor, the bridges are up, the flyover. At Junction Mall, it's mm. taking shape. These are investments. So, as for Mahmoud, Dr. Baumia, his prowess and potential and what he can deliver, his output is huge. <laughs> and you know what? The current inflationary pressures. The last time I used an analogy that when you have a very bright student who performs below average or average performance mm. in a particular semester. Mm. If you see anybody shouting on the rooftop, ah, we told you, he's not good, he's not good, he's not good. Maybe there is malice. You have to check why a student who for three years has been scoring first class all of a sudden drops to average. If you go and check and the guy has been sick the whole semester and he's in the hospital mm. and attended only one lecture, it's not fair to say that he doesn't know what is left or right. The world was hit by a pandemic. Said it. And that is a fact. When JM was president, when Mills was president, at what time did we close the airport for close to a year? What time? It's no child's play when you have to close your harbors for close to a year and international trade has ceased. Where is your influence going to come from? They don't mention these things, but we've lived through it. And so when you start to judge by me and say that, what about inflation? Look, the inflation prof Mills left JM at a point mm -hmm. for a long time to a single digit. This is the highest in 18 years. Mr. Host, when JM was living, it was 15.4. The highest. He was in it. JM was. Oh, let me see. The highest in 18 years. Mr. Host, a British station, I hold. Don't dig further. And now you are digging more. The economy from Mills left JM. How do you call it? JM. Fantastic economy, growing average 6.87 percent. Is it now? But how come the chairman became no, president? No, but, you, see, to go no, but you know, but you know the reason. <laughs> if you wake up, well, you know, you wake okay, up one morning okay, to okay. see crude oil price <laughs> falling to 35. Mr. Host, you know, it. Mr. Host, I'll, I'll, I'll run to my. Yes, no, no, let, let me run up by saying that mm, mm. the truth is that there are events that have worried all of us. I appreciate, I live, I'm a, I'm a community, I, I, I call myself a community activist, meaning I relate and interact with people. There is a lot of pressure on working adults, on everybody. Mm. And I was watching the news just a week ago. You know what? In the US, they made a comment. Apparently, the prices of oil before the Ukraine conflict has risen by 38%. Mm. That's what the host, they were trying to find reasons why all of a sudden they call it gas prices, mm. was sorry. Edwidji wouldn't tell you this. But the last time when JM went to Harvard, he made a fantastic comment that the world was on its path to recovery mm. until the conflict in Ukraine came in. In fact, when I heard the words, I had to play it again. I thought it was Mahmoud speaking because these are things that Dr. Bami has speaking over and over. So these are times that are quite, what's the word that I'll use? Juicy for people like Edwidji who want power. So when they meet you, all they'll tell you is that, Charlie, check your gas. Things are hard. But a duty is away. No, but that, oh, the coming. economy is what you feel. Oh, come. Oh. You see, I'm coming. You know, <laughs> a duty will tell you things are hard, mm. but a duty is away. That they taught us the path of deregulation. It was when NDC was in power that they called all of us and said, look, guys, we don't produce all the oil we use here. We buy it from outside. No, Kufo actually brought the deregulation. And then you said, the it. MPA Act. They so, brought it. Uh -huh. So you, no, but you as the record. So, the record. <laughs> but you as the record. Let's just tell you, tell you, you <laughs> fund the project. What the, 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 No, but that is why we have said that. No, 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 35% taxes alone on petroleum product. Do something about it. But you know, you know what? Just a second. You know what? Right, right, right. Yesterday, the President of the Republic commissioned a 175 uh, million <laughs> Ghana city plant. Mm. Private that, initiative. Coming, I know. That produces infant uh, cereals. Completely private. That is absorbed 800 workers. Right, my brother, I'm happy you mentioned private. And you know, the truth is that private participants cannot do those investments if your economy is not promising, ah. if things are bad. Okay, boy, and you know what? 
It's a signal of recovery. Mm. We are on our path to recovery. Mm. And our prayer is that that path will be expedited. The more expedited it is, the less a duty will get Vim. Now his Vim is up because COVID came to warriors and all that. And that's why mm. monkeypox too, he was warning everybody. <laughs> Make sure you take it. We will we'll, we'll get out of all these troubles. You know, we'll get out of all these troubles. Let me, let me, let me go to my messages um, quickly. And uh, <laughs> Usman, I, you didn't have to call me on there, but um, let, me, let me still do it this way. He says, good morning, Efri. I still doubt the current inflation rate by Ghana Statistical Service, but the price increases on the market. The inflation rate should be hovering around 40%. And I think someone is massaging the figures. We are in the economic downturn. Ousu Banahini sent in that one. Ousu, I'll, I'll, be, I'll call you after, after the show. I hope you're doing very well. Now, um, Nana Okramwa Boatin says, Good morning, Akwesi. Is the National Cathedral not for government? And what is wrong if government is funding it? The government should be proactive in updating the public rather than firefighting approach. I'm totally disappointed in the way government is managing information. They only sit for NDC to set agenda for them. Nana Okuyamwa Boatin Ablekuma Central, a.k.a. E. Levy, is good. Sent in that one. And now, Alaji Hamza, Pick uh, Farm. My brother, good morning to you. I hope you're doing very well. Um... He says, I salute you, my brother. We have been told by the former general secretary of Christian Council that the president only promised to provide them with the seed money and the land for the cathedral. But how come the poor taxpayer has to suffer for the promise made by the president uh, to build a cathedral to the glory of God if he wins elections? Let's not forget properties belonging to the state, including houses of our judges, were all demolished to make way for the cathedral. Please point correction. Point of correction. No state properties were demolished to make way for the central mosque. That is the difference. The poor taxpayer monies has to be used to rent houses for our judges. Why all this? Alaji Hamza Pig Farm sent in that one. Uh, Kwesi Reynolds Aguna Odobin says. Our woes as a country is the unnecessary politicization of issues rather than finding a common solution to a problem. Fact is, economies everywhere is in a major crisis and Ghana cannot be an exception. It is amazing how people blame the government as if they possess a magic wand to make things normalize. Now should they be given the power? Kwesi Reynolds in Aguna Odobin sent in that one. A.U. Farouk. In Tamale, uh, it's been a while. I hope you're doing well. Inflation is high again. Where is President Anna Akufuado heading Ghana to? God save us. A.U. Farouk sent in that one. Tafa in Amirahia says, We are told that tourists will come and visit the cathedral, uh, and that will generate some money for the state. Because people don't travel far to come and visit a new cathedral or mosque. If to visit a particular cathedral or mosque, uh, that means there is history behind a cathedral or that mosque. When I went to Mecca and Medina, I visited some few mosques. And uh, those mosques I visited in Medina had history behind them. The history behind them is that either Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah had prayed in them, uh, or holy books had acknowledged and mentioned them, and also some of these mosques are over 1,000 years old. I hope I mentioned the prophet's name uh, very well. If I didn't, kindly uh, forgive me on that one. McLean Desmond says, and McLean, congratulations to you for your appointment. Uh, you have been appointed as the NYE director for the Western North region. You said if I don't mention this one. But uh, congratulations to you, my brother. I think I now, it on Rocky, Urbane. Uh, Rocky Urbane had posted it on uh, Facebook. So, McLean. Congratulations to you. And now you say that any good yeah, student of politics. I noticed that became vacant and I had to be occupied. Mm, mm, mm. But from, <laughs> from Rocky, who is the Western Regional yeah, Minister, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a very good guy. He's yes. been serving Rocky you very well. Rocky was my year senior at right. the Department of Economics. Right, yeah. right. And uh, McLean is a very uh, good man, so he deserves it. Any good student of politics and governance must basically know that a particular government is replaced only when. Uh, there is a better alternative, not necessarily because of its weaknesses. To focus on his new 
<laughs> in a case where electricists realize that notwithstanding those weaknesses of the incumbent, the opposition is not a better option either. There is absolutely no reason to change. There is the current status of uh, this is the current status of the NDCs, and that is something that he deliberately seems not to understand. McLean Desmond says she you also sent in that one. Sir Obama in Pukwasi says. Osu Banahini should, pay, should spare us his Zoom wishes. He turned himself into a professional Jeremiah, always predicting doom. He is kind uh, the reason why the National Cathedral is a must. Anyway, it's my fervent prayer that the NPP delegates re-elect John Buedu as General Secretary, Stephen Intim as the National Chairman, Collins and Nyama CNN as the National Treasurer, and Nana B as uh, the National Organizer. Um, Sir Obama in Pukwasi, he adds Eduji and his mischief. So that one is from my brother to you. But he, um, knows, he knows that the candidate is supporting Agufado doesn't like him. Well, <laughs> I, I, I mentioned I a number of candidates. He's supporting a number of <laughs> candidates. Please tell President that Ghanaians are suffering, so he should, tell, he should put the cathedral matter on hold. Alhaji Haruna Asaiman, good morning, Kwesi. Uh, good morning to you as well. So, um, I think I would end uh, the text messages here. Uh, let me do this one for you, Mystic. Um, yesterday, I wasn't able to read yours, and I promised I was going to do it today. So, Mystic, um, wonder inside in Sawama Dwajiri. Good morning to you, Kwesi. Lawyer Iduji, Tobi Afede has displayed sensitivity. Okay, let me read this one. This was of yesterday. Uh, inflation and economic indicators has arrested and exposed Dr. Baumia. Uh, the theoretical and textbook economist and his NPP government. I entreat all well-meaning Ghanaians to join the NDC, bring back JDM to rescue Ghanaians from uh, this corruption, nepotistic, nation wrecker, intolerant and insensitive, incompetent government. And uh, the final one will come from David Ubri Yabua, youth activist Dom Kwabinya, Eduji and his party knows the cost of everything, but the value is nothing of nothing. <laughs> Kindly ask him where he wanted the temple of God to be built. God needs a prime area to dwell. Okay, besides was Ghanaians <laughs> better off besides, was Ghanaians better off when his government was busily branding bastards with President Muhammad's pictures, who determines a priority of government? If hard pilgrimage is subsidized by government and Eduji is okay by that, he should have a problem with the cathedral. David Ubri Ebua, youth activist, Dom Kwabinya sent in that one. A very special birthday to you, Zita Benson. And uh, we got that this morning, but from the entire crew here at Metro TV, from lawyer Eduji Tamaflu, and of course from uh, Dr. Uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the NHIA. Everybody says a very happy birthday to you. We pray that God blesses you and you enjoy your day. And the same day is uh, the birthday for my brother, my dear brother, Stephen Ato Kwamina Fossen. Today is your birthday. You are the Chief Executive Officer of Create Music, Create Lounge, the Create Businesses. Um, you are doing very well and the CEO of, uh, you know him. Great guy. Yeah, he's a very good, solid guy. He's the CEO of um, iPro Solutions as well, and he's been doing very well. So, yes, you to know, you as well. Last Sunday, mm -hmm. the chief of staff, mm -hmm. our own mother, mm -hmm. uh, Duji's mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Duji's the last but one child. <laughs> yes. And I'm the last one. The yes. last boy. And uh, she celebrated her birthday, and uh, I thank God for her life, mm -hmm. the strength she has now mm -hmm. at, 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 the, at her age, and all the good things she does, especially for we, the young ones. For, for she the holds, she she holds us as her kids. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, pray for my long my, life. My, for incidentally, my, the same days, prayer, my days in Lagos. The same prayer is. <laughs> my days in Lagos, that was when she was MP. Yes. Yes. She was <laughs> very <laughs> active then in her organization. <laughs> Right, so um, this, this no, is Afie, a good morning, Ghana. Just, just 30 seconds. Five, five, no, it's five yeah. seconds. Um, okay. Um, you know, ECG did something for me mm. over um, mm. by, um, that was yesterday, mm. and I need to really thank them for it. Mm. Uh, my area, they have 
right, and I had to basically call. He called and them. They had to find a way to intervene. No, no, the, the government machinery is working. It has nothing to do with that. So, so, so uh, this is where we round up. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and of course, happy birthday to you again, Stephen Forsen, Zita, and uh, Chief of Staff. All of you, we appreciate all of you very much. And uh, today happens to be a birthday as well. Mm. Mm. Right, mm. right. So thank you viewers for doing the watching as well and sending in your text message. My brother Starboy is standing by, so you don't want to go away, you want to stick and stay with us, see what is trending uh, on GMG Trends. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Are you hopeful about Ghana? I cannot afford not to Is it just hopeful. because you are Ghanaian? There's too much going for Ghana for mm -hmm. it not to work. Ghana is not a poor country. And why do you say that? We are a poorly managed country. Lifestyle, the way and manner a people live, their politics, way of governance, social cultural lifestyle, health habits, and everything that comes with it. Lifestyle with Rosie is a show about Ghana and for Ghana. Is there something like an ideal time for a woman to have a child? Early 20s. No, Doc, you agree with the, me? The time they are telling you, don't be, uh, that is the time that your body says, yes, this is the best time. Interesting. Are people taking more mortgage or people are self-building their homes still as it's been? vast number of people still out there that are buying the land. Unfortunately, some people actually pass away and that building never gets completed. But yeah. you can also die, die through <laughs> paying mortgage. Eh? Well, sorry. there's a way to go around that anyway, okay. so you're covered. Right. We'll yeah. Ghana is for us. If we don't talk about our issues and highlight our challenges and find solutions to them, who will? Lifestyle with Rosie is here to bring you all the intricate conversations of nation building on health and all the complexities of life that we find difficult to talk about as a people. Hi, my name is Rosie and I'm your host on this show. There are no limits to what we expect. It's educative, informative, thought-provoking and very exciting. And oh yes, I can't wait to spend time with you Saturdays at 6 p.m. Make a date. Welcome back from that break. Um, Starboy is here. This is still Good Morning Ghana, but of course, this part is the GMG trend. So I'll leave it for you. Starboy, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, mm. This is what I'm going to do that quickly. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thomas Part is in the news, but this time it's not Thomas, it is Yakubu. So if you know Kwakasi song, <laughs> Femi Yakubu. <laughs> yeah. Yakubu Part is in the news. And then we get to talk about the monkeypox uh, disease also, Charlie. Some crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. And let me start with Thomas Party. But as always, you can join in on Twitter with your uh, comments coming in at hashtag Good Morning Ghana, tweet at Metro TV, or at me, Desipating. So, Thomas Party, the vice captain of the Black Stars, the Arsenal superstar, the second highest earner in the Arsenal team, says that he's now a Muslim because of his girlfriend, Sarah Bella. But the latest update is that he says he's changed his name from Thomas to Yakubu Party. So Mill um, was carrying a lot of portals on social media. Um, I have been talking about it, that he's now called Yakubu Party after marrying his uh, Muslim wife and changing his religion. So please, if you mention the name, it's Yakubu Party. But people, they talk, who, people are saying things that last, last. Last, last, if they take two, I you have to convert back and through. Someone says, ah, like party, really, Yakubu. Ah, well, King Kweku says, and this one says, ah, so the name be Yakubu party with the laughing emojis there. And this one says, didn't anyone advise party? <laughs> Women will show you. That's what people say. I, mean, I don't know, they don't show me yet. 
<laughs> on that note, let's move on to the monkeypox disease. Yesterday, the Ghana Health Service mentioned that. Metro TV, insightful and inspiring moments. Mansum Kwanta, the capital of Amansi West, a district in the Ashanti region, is about 72 kilometers from the capital, Kumasi. The 26,000 population of the area 